Then they've got to pound it inside. Their bigs have to dominate the paint. When you look at Pepperdine, limit the pilot's high-low touches. Active hands, pressure all the perimeter passes, and then flatten out wintering. Here we go. It's Jet Reigns and Gay Roon to tip it here at center court. And we are underway in Malibu as the Waves will handle the opening offensive possession. Portland Pilots. Who are two and four in conference play. There's a drive on the baseline. And a nice dump off to an open man underneath, but not able to hit is A.J. John, the freshman. Pepperdine opens up in that man-to-man. -man. Going to be very aggressive. Interior defense will be key. One thing you notice about Portland coming in is the size advantage. They've got a player that's 6'11 out on the floor. Nobody for Pepperdine has that kind of size. Well, that's the strength to this Portland team. The balance, they've got a guard that can penetrate, but bigs have to get involved early. And how about Todd, the freshman, yeah, knocking yeah. it down from the outside from Mill Creek, Washington. Averaging just five points per game. Chris, he's probably benefited the most with Bailey out of the starting lineups. He's got great minutes early. We're seeing that experience pay off. So the Pilots coming off of that loss against LMU. Pepperdine coming off of the loss against Gonzaga. And what was a packed house here at Firestone Fieldhouse. There's an open three from the right side as Jeremy Major was shooting it from the outside pretty well, 40% of the season. Major with the great hit, but it was Jet Reigns that set that screen that opened up that shot. Major, one of the best. He started every game of his career. And inside, there's a miss. And the rebound to Pepperdine as Reigns pushes it ahead all the way to the rim as Olden went for the one-handed stuff. Got rejected but fouled, and so the freshman will go to the free throw line. Well, I really love the way they try and push the ball up the floor. And here's the freshman, a lefty from Tulsa, Oklahoma. He's fearless, high basketball IQ, and he loves to play above the rim. He looks like he's been extremely well coached. The coaching staff said he's a sponge. I love his bounce. Just under 10 points per game. His only Division I scholarship came from Pepperdine, which is rather remarkable because he's had a really fantastic freshman year. He's missed both free throws there. And the rebound to Todd. I like the energy in the early going for both teams coming out. Both teams need a win. Like I said, you don't want to go oh donut for the week four. Somebody's got to step up and get this conference win. And a nice shot inside by Taylor. And Portland back on top. As Gabe Taylor, another one of those freshmen, making his first start. Set outside, shot in the way. That's a deep two, no good. Out of the hands of Atif Russell, and there is Wintering. The diminutive Wintering, he wants to push. And he's not either a primary scorer, he can dish the ball as well. Absolutely. The strength of his game is his decision making. He can get up and down the floor, he executes in the half court. How about Gabe Taylor knocking down his second consecutive shot as the freshman? Two in a row, already beyond his season average of three and a half. Chris, watching him shoot in warm-ups, to me, he's the best shooting big. He looks like he had range to 19. Jed Range misfires on a deep three as the 6'7 junior. He can stretch it out. Wintering on a push. We'll kick it back outside. And we got contact with the ball springs free. Into the arms of Bolden, up ahead. Russell will finish it off. You know, Atif Russell can score in transition, but what I like about him, he's accepting his role. He's defending, he's rebounding, he's running the floor. A year ago, he was all about getting shots. Been a completely different player since getting inserted into the starting lineup for Atif Russell, the junior, out of Katy, Texas. Portland still with the early one-point lead. Derud wants to face up on John. Got caught underneath, had nowhere to go, and he turns it over to Major. Two on two. Major somehow split the double team and the left-handed layup off the glass is good. Well, I love the way he pushes and penetrates. A scoring point guard out of Pasadena, California. He can still score, but I like the way his game is matured, and he runs his team and gets others involved. Jeremy Major a couple of buckets in the early going. Pilots want to get it inside, but back to Gay Room. Passes outside to Taylor. 
His three, not that time. He had knocked down his first two, and the long rebound comes out to range. Up ahead on Winterling, a little step inside. How about the big fella in transition finishing it off? Well, it's amazing to see a guy 6'7", put it on the floor. He has really developed his handle and skill over the summer with Marty Wilson and staff. And so Pepperdine, a little extension here as oh, Winterling got behind the defense. And the left-handed lamp, a little too strong, no good. And Major looking to push, doesn't have the numbers, and wisely decides to pull it back out. And he'll drive baseline, kicked it out to Russell, and that goes right through his hands in, out of bounds on the far sideline. And Tilt here in Malibu at Pepperdine. The Waves leading the Portland Pilots 9-6 with Coach Dave Miller. I'm Chris Fisher. Thank you for being with us. Good start to this game. Portland with the basketball. Clearly the emphasis early on has been getting the ball inside. That's the strength of this team. They've got to get it inside and command doubles and then get the perimeter going. And a turnover. The mishandle there as Kevin Bailey has come in. And Pepperdine back the other way. They really 6-0 advantage in points in the paint. As the Waves, who started out just 1 of 4 from the floor, now on a 6 0 run. Here's Olden trying to drive on the baseline. A little hand check by Presley for the personal foul. You know, what's impressed me about Olden is we know he can score, but right now he's got two assists. So he's not only a threat to get to the rim, he's also making others better and distributing. Here is Stacy Davis, who's checked into the game as Reigns is double teamed in the corner. Finds a slashing play with the ball got tipped. Winterling out in transition. In the reverse layup, and he gets fouled hard by Olden. And we get to see Alec Winterling now go to the free throw line. There's a lot of contact there on the baseline. Well, we never liked to foul, but I'll tell you what I liked. I liked the freshman being able to get back and run him down, not giving up in pursuit, going up with the left hand, trying to block the shot to avoid the foul. Uh, obviously, contact. Winterling gets to the free throw line. You know, Coach, you see the NBA a lot, and this is Alec Winterling, and this is considered the golden age of point guards in the NBA because they can not only distribute the basketball, but also they can score, which is something that Alec Winterling can do. Well, it just makes him a double threat in the sense that you've got to locate him, you've got to corral him. His athleticism gets him to the rim. What he's developed is being able to kick it out and get other good shots on time, on target. An 84% free throw shooter, missed the second. Way to one out of two. Pepperdine still with the two point lead. And he also has gone to his bench a little bit. And Stacy Davis has checked in. A little step back jumper, that's short, no good. And the long rebound comes out to Winterling. How about Davis, who has now come off the bench for four consecutive games? There's a drive inside, left handed scoop layup, no good. And we get an offensive rebound by Vandermars, and he gets fouled. Well, so, by him coming off the bench, he's also able to buy some time. He was really fouling early too much, and Marty Wilson told me, I want to let him sit down, get settled, see the game, and then he comes in fresh when a couple other guys are winded. Boy, not too many coaches going to put their leading scorer on the bench to come out of a game. That's a bold move by Marty Wilson. Stacey Davis is one of the best players in the entire WCC. Part disciplinary, part motivational, but it works. When you go on the road and you can sweep a road trip like they did last week, something's working. Credit Stacey Davis for accepting it. Again, the goal top. Vandermar's little hook shot with the right hand. No good. Follow attempt. Also no good by Presley. We get a loose ball out of bounds. It'll go back to the Waves. And for Portland as well, you had Vandermars, who has been a starter every game this season, coming off of the bench for the very first time. Well, I like the way Pre uh, Presley and I like the way Gabe York is in there, relentless on the boards. That is a strength of this team. Portland should out-rebound just based on the size disadvantage. That'll be a telling story of the remaining of this first half, Chris. Both teams off to a little bit of a slow start here offensively. Just a two-point lead for Pepperdine. And that'll be a turnover. What Back the other way. What we're seeing is once the bigs of the uh, poor, uh, the waves are putting the basketball on the floor, they're starting to see the double. They've got to show more, more poise, chin the basketball, read the defense, get rid of the ball to the open man. Zuba Zaretta has checked in for the first time for Portland. Casey 
Todd also in. Both coaches going to the bench here in this first half. Portland needs a bucket. It's missed four consecutive. Even Zaretta out of control, and he gets bailed out by a foul as he was trying to make a move. We get a foul on Pepperdine, a push. This is where Biandola has to slide his feet and stay squared. The foul occurred because his feet were facing the sideline. You've got to get skinny, get over top of that screen, stay between your man and the basket. Baseline drive will get another foul. And almost the identical play to the one before is Portland is going to get bailed out by a foul. Absolutely, Chris, the same principle. When that baseline drive comes, the defender has to get his bottom foot on or outside that baseline. That's going to stop the dribble drive, make him pick it up, and what a great area to trap. We call that one of the coffin corners. A.J. John has checked back in. Todd catches on the entry. Seven minutes gone by in this first half in what has been a defensive battle. And I think defense is certainly one of Pepperdine's strengths. There's a baby hook with a right hand. Nicely done by Thomas Vandermars, the senior averaging in double digits with his first bucket of the game. John inside, blocked from behind and out of bounds. With Vandermars coming off the bench, Reveno was trying to get him more focused, and there you see that jump hook. When I see that jump hook, I think really good in the league. And then the relentlessness on defense for Portland to try and seal off the paint blocks the shot. Vandermars has progressed. Oh, there's a deflection into the backcourt. Subicereta almost had it. There's Major trying to go. For two from downtown, and he knocks down his second three of the game. Heads up play from Lamont Murray, not to force it, but credit Major for spotting up. And right back the other way on a three-point play possibility is Kevin Bailey. Right here with Lamont Murray. A year ago, he would have taken it in and probably drew a charge. Here, he kicks it back out to Jeremy Major. When his feet are squared, he's got excellent three-point range, Chris. So Kevin Bailey at 12 points per game, struggled mightily against Gonzaga. Was just one out of 10 from the field, and already more action for the 6'5 senior from Clovis as he completes the three-point play to tie this game at 12. Major guarded closely in the backcourt. Here's Stacy Davis, who's taken just one shot in the game. Back to the basket now, faces up. Double team. 10 on the shot clock for the Waves. Major's going to have to make a move. Hedged out far. Davis way behind the arc for three. No, ball tipped up, and it's Bailey ripping it away for the Pilots and a good defensive stop. Great perimeter defense. Portland built a wall every dribble drive. Here's Vandermars, got inside. Oh, it looked like the baby hook was deflected, and Portland knocks it out of bounds on the deflection. These two teams locked up. You know his game, X and O's has gotten good. But to go on a road trip and to be regulated to the bench and win both games and then come back and be rewarded with the WCC Player of the Week, that shows that he's matured, he's accepted it, and he told Marty Wilson, if it's not broke, don't fix it. I don't mind coming off the bench. Maybe a little superstition involved in him coming off of the bench. They played well, and they almost knocked off the Zags. And keeping it going is... Stacey Davis on pace to become the school's leading scorer if he continues to produce the way that he has. Chris, there you saw a little 2-2-1 two, two, back to their 2-3 zone, buying some time off the clock, and now just showing a different look defensively. Ten on the shot clock. Portland has stepped it up defensively. Is Olman's going to fire another three? That one miss, misses, and we get a re rebound to Wintering. Didn't necessarily like that shot against the zone. You've got to dribble, penetrate, draw two defenders to one, move the basketball from side to side, stretch the D like a rubber band. A lot of back to the basket, Vandermars. He'll go with the right hand this time. Oh. And he misfires, and knocking it out of bounds is Gay Roon. Boy, these teams have gotten ice cold now from the floor. They have, but I credit the defense. Sometimes you get into that scoring drought, and I'm seeing teams right now 
Portland changing defense, the Wave staying man-to-man, -man, but it's just active. They're trying to take away all the dribble drives, and thus, you're not getting those easy scores in the paint. Thomas Vanderbars, who is one of the better shooters from the field in the entire conference at almost 55%. It's been quiet here, I and mean, they continue to give him the ball. He's just one out of his first four. Latif Russell. Pepperdine's playing sideline to sideline. I want to see the ball go inside out, some skip passes. Davis a little short. A.J. John came flying in for the rebound. It's loose on the baseline. And it's Pepperdine getting possession of the official right there to grant the timeout. Head. The W.TV is your home for West Coast Conference action, featuring more than 65 live WCC men's basketball games. Visit the W.TV from your browser, smartphone, tablet, or connected TV to watch live TV out of market games for free. W.TV, all the action, anytime, anywhere. Wintering is called for the personal foul. This is where right now they've got to see what they're in. So as the ball goes in, you're going to send a cutter through to see if they're still in the zone. It appears that they are. But the Waves have to get the basketball inside. And with the trap coming here, you see that wide open area, whether it's in the key at the free throw line or by that W in West Coast Conference, someone's got to flash through the ball with target hands. Well, this is where it's a little tough for Pepperdine to match up against the size of Portland in getting it inside. They really don't have anybody that can go back to the basket. Absolutely. That that's why ball movement is so paramount right now to move guys, make the defense, make a decision, hopefully the wrong one, and then get it inside. Wintering, stutter step, nice pass. Oh! Rule got inside, and he went up for the flush, and A.J. John came over on the defensive help and saved the dunk, but Garoon's going to go to the free throw line for two. As you can see with this dribble penetration right here, he affects the defense. Garoon gets behind on the baseline, and he's able to score. Major's got to stay there and take that away. And then A.J. John tried to stop the ball, came back, fouled from behind. Two free throws for the transfer from West Virginia. Gayru no good on the first. Well, I'll tell you what I like. It's his physicality, Chris. As you said, a transfer from West Virginia. I see a lot of Bob Huggins in that rugged uh, style that he has. He leads this team in double-doubles. He needs a big night this afternoon. Hey, he has the opportunity to take over games, too. He's got the physical presence. And if he's got that blue-collar mentality of Bob Huggins, that's a good blueprint to have as a player. Then you add in Eric Revenue. Yeah. He's got two bruisers that have coached him. There's A.J. John, no good. Trying to bank it home outside the left block. And well, these two teams have gone so cold from the outside. Kevin Bailey to Wintering. Bailey left open. His three on the way. And there's a shot from the outside for the Pilots. As that is Kevin Bailey. Nice to see him get his first bucket again. Pepperdine went to the zone. He was able to knock it down. We'll see if Pepperdine goes back to man next possession down. 10-3 runs, so the Pilots now up by four. Stacy Davis, he's been caught in the corner most of this first half. Cross court over to Olden on the corner. A drive on that zone, and he got blocked out of bounds. And the official's going to call a jump ball. What a defensive play by, by Garoon coming over and blocking Olden. Right here, I like the ball reversal. Pepperdine late on the closeout. Bailey feet set, target hands up, nails the three. Little three quarters court pressure here from Pepperdine. Bailey, oh, he had an opportunity, another three instead. Inside to Taylor, who's going to bank it home. Taylor's really impressed me for a freshman to come in and to have that poise. I know he can shoot it from the perimeter. We'll be able to see if he can do some damage inside. So Gabe Taylor, the 6'8 freshman, who's making his first career start, in there because of the season-ending injury to Riley Barker. And he has responded with this opportunity, especially in the first half, as Davis is going to get fouled underneath. He certainly has. I don't see any freshman jitters. Also, Chris, I like the way Reveno is changing his defense. They're in that zone. They're trapping in the corner. That time they went back to man. It's sort of breaking up the ebb and flow of this offense that we've seen be very efficient and effective for Pepperdine. 
Stacy Davis to the free throw line. He's been held scoreless up to this point. He's missed his first three shots. Out of Levine, Arizona. Well, the thing I don't want to see with Stacy is that he hasn't had the amount of shots that he would like not to force it. The spacing has to stay, whether they're in man or zone, set a cutter through, but get shots within the offense. That's been the success of this I team. I can just hear you coaching him right now. Hey, don't feel like you have to force it. You're going to get your points. They're going to come. Just let it come naturally, right? Absolutely, my man. Bailey in transition. Mid-range jumper. And boy, is he having a response game after struggling over the last couple. Especially against Gonzaga, Evan Bailey, and over 12 points per game, is having himself a nice first half. Well, the difference has been in this game, he's the ball is finding the open shot. At LMU, he was forcing it. And sometimes when you miss games and you're a senior, you want to press the issue. When you press the issue, it usually doesn't bode well. It's been Portland, the Pilots, with a little run here to take the lead by six. Team, but it's been Gabe Taylor so far. Chris, that's what's been beautiful to me, watching this freshman. He's three for four. We know he can shoot from the perimeter. I like his defense that he's protecting the paint. And then, just out of one trick pony, I like the way he found the open scene. He made a hard cut. He was rewarded with the score. He had a career high 12 points against LMU. So he said he might not be seeing the court if it wasn't for the season ending injury to Riley Barker. And so Gabe Taylor is taking advantage of the 6'8 freshman from Portland, Oregon. A big reason why the Pilots now have jumped out to a six-point lead on the road. I like the ball pressure. Yeah, Portland's come out. They're trying to be disruptive on the perimeter, whether they're man and zone. Their hands are active. They've got live feet. Pepperdine's struggling to get good looks. Everything coming from the outside is Olden, an aggressive move. Kind of a wild shot, but he's left-handed, and he was able to use that to his advantage as he flicked it up and in. Just on cue, I'll talk about not good looks, and he takes it to the basket on a great dribble drive. Take it batters into his own hands. That's not the big pilot's run. Down a little step back. Jumper. That's a tough yeah. shot, but he knocks it down. Boy, he wow. absorbed the contact. Olden took the drive on the chest. And like I said, he's benefited the most. He can catch. He can shoot. This guy with Bailey out has really gotten some valuable experience early on in the WCC. Pepperdine needs a bucket. Everything is bent from the outside. Look out state. Stacey Davis mid post. And a little shot is good. Davis, that's his first bucket of the game. Well, I like the way he got inside, had a big on his back. He spread out, and he demanded the basketball with the target hand. See if the scoring can pick up here. Jimmy Serena sent it cross court. There's a drive, getting inside. Oh, point Blake, they have no good from Presley. Portland's able to get it back. Todd open, left wing three, no. And the rebound to Major, three on two for Pepperdine. He'll split the double team and lay it up and in a transition. That's what makes him so dangerous. He's got a, he's a blur. He's got that great push acceleration step that I call, and he certainly has no problem finishing at the rim. Two-point game. Super Serena trying to no-look pass, got deflected. Subi Serena goes left. Knifing his way, and he got blocked from behind. Here's Major again out in front. Ahead to Russell. Gets fouled hard, and we'll go to the line for two. And the defense getting active here for the Waves, creating a little offense. And when that happens, you've got to have guys run the floor. This is a great defensive play that we're going to watch right here. The Geico defensive play of the game. And as he puts it on the floor, he doesn't give up on the play. Most bigs right now would stop. He pursues it, gets it from behind. That starts the fast break. The defensive play of the game is brought to you by Geico. One 15-minute call can save you 15% or more on your car insurance. So Pepperdine getting back in it here is Russell at the free throw line. And Atif Russell, the 6'5 junior, we had one game his entire career through the first 58 in which he scored in double digits. And he's already got four this year. He's just been a completely different player. 
He's been one of my grit and grind guys on this team. I mean, he'll get down, he'll guard you, he'll rebound. You can count on him to hit an open shot from 15 foot and in. I told him yesterday, I called him smooth silk. I, I just love the look of the shot, and he was shooting with great confidence yesterday in practice. Pepperdine back in it on an 8-2 run. Here is Wintering. He's been quiet offensively. Just one point so far. One of the leading scores in the conference. Here's a forced up shot wildly. No good by Bailey. Ball loose on the floor and trying to save it out of bounds was Vandermars, but he stepped on the strike. This has been a great chess match, watching teams change their defenses, trying to surprise them. Right here you see they're fighting for it, but it's tipped out of bounds. I, I like the relentlessness. Vandermeer steps on the line, easy call for the Zebras. Marley Biendolo is handling the point because Amadi Udini, the true backup point guard, is out with a hamstring injury. So Biendolo has been handling the point. When you talk about having a third string point guard come in, he's more of a combo, but he's solid, smart, and tough. The coaches told me he just does a lot of little things that they like. Nothing great yet as a freshman. Going to need him considering the production of Udini and Stacey Davis misfired on the mid-range jumper. 22 to 22. Wintering gets tied up and lost the handle. Great anticipation by Biondola to get to the level of the ball. And it's Olden in transition, and boy, he got ahead of steam going to the rim on that left hand, and he gets fouled, and so he'll go back to the free throw line. It's Pepperdine defense stepping up here. Well, you can't get beat off the dribble, and if you do, you've got to have a help, a teammate help. Biondola was the next closest man there. You see how he drops, he gets a hand on the ball, causes a turnover. For how good Sean Olden is, he's had a hard time here at the free throw line. He's missed all three. Well, you know, you mentioned that he, his only scholarship offer was here to Pepperdine, and what was funny is he told me his high school teammate signed to play baseball at Pepperdine, Josh Davis. He wasn't recruited at all in the state of Oklahoma. Josh Davis calls Marty Wilson. They offer him a scholarship, and they've got one of the best freshmen in the WCC. Say, hey, you got to check this guy out. There were two other players on that state championship winning team that went on to Division I but playing football as Presley's going to knock it down from the left side. It's good to see Presley get involved. I call him my Swiss Army knife. He does a lot of things extremely well. They've got to get him going, run a couple sets for him. Under four minutes remaining in this first half. As Portland has responded, Russell's left open. He's going to launch a three. That's no good. And the strong side rebound comes out to Presley. Fadeaway shot, and how about Kevin Bailey? Got inside, and you said he looked a little bit like a former player here in Southern California in the NBA, Robert Ory. Robert Ory, when you take a quick look at him, and, and you know Kevin Bailey, he's like Robert. There's never been a shot he did like. I like that he's letting the, the ball find him as opposed to pressing. He's going to get his average. It always happens. Don't force him. And yet, oh, knocking it down a deep two. Foot might have been on the line. For Marley Biendolo, not a big time score. Under a point a game, but that's a big bucket for the way. Well, I like the way they moved the basketball, didn't force it inside, got the open look. No, no on the three for Bryce Presley. Now they're going to Davis on the post. Guarded by Vandermars. Lowers the shoulder, drops the contact, ball back outside, old in the three. That's great offense. The double came almost to triple. They kick it out. They make the extra pass. Textbook basketball. Marty Wilson has to love the way they're sharing the rock. And it looks like the Pilots turn it over. All of a sudden, Pepperdine finding its stroke from the outside. The personal fouls in the early couple of minutes, and Marty Wilson said, well, you're not going to pick up your third, so you're going to join me here on the bench. Really smart move, and without Jet Reigns in there, I love the way Pepperdine scoring in the paint. They're up. They've doubled up uh, uh, Portland 12-6. to six. This tells me we're going to expect to see a big dose of him in the second half. Smart move by Marty Wilson. So after falling behind, as Portland had taken four-point lead. Pepperdine responding here with some offense. Little 2-2-1 two, two, to extend it, giving him another look, and here comes the hard trap. They've got to flash somebody to the middle. 
Major double teamed, and it looked like Bailey was going to pick off the pass as he got the hand in the passing lane. And just not enough space, knocked it out of bounds. As we said in the opening, you're watching two teams play extremely hard. And right here, with the ball, picked up dribble. They're trapping, and then they get one trap, they come right back to another trap. That's relentless pressure on the ball. Lamont Murray Jr. back in the game. Olden's going to launch it from way downtown, and the freshman buries it. That's one way to get a team out of the zone. Now, if it doesn't go in, Reveno, Reveno is happy. Marty Wilson's like, no, no. Yes. And Kevin Bailey with the answer. He's got 13 for the Pilots. He's had a great first half as the Waves and Jeremy Major turn it over in transition. But this one, you love Sean Olden. How about Kevin Bailey from the outside? But here's Olden first on that catch and shoot jump shot. And now we're going to see Bailey. Feet are set. He's really got off to a strong start. Four for six from the field, has 10 points in the half. All of this coming in. Alex Wittery has been completely quiet as he turns it over on the baseline. Him and Todd not on the same page. Minute 32 to go in what has been a very well played first half by both teams. Like the intensity and the urgency defensively, which has made the offense at times stutter for both. Jeremy Major, the point guard. Always looking to distribute the basketball. A.J. John well extended. Again, mixing up the defense. Portland in a man-to-man. -man. Now you're seeing some motion trying to get Stacey Davis inside. Now Davis steps out. Drive kick, Major is knocked down two, but not a third. And Vander Mars with a good box out on the rebound. Kevin Bailey, why not? And he connects. Well, you get into a rhythm. I think you've got to pick the ball up earlier. You can't get let Bailey get that full head of steam. He measures you up, and it was a rhythm pull-up. Kevin Bailey, the second leading scorer for the Pilots. Already up to 15 in the first half. Oh, now Vandermar's got a hand on the pass oh. into the backcourt. It was picked up by Major. And we see those active hands and the length of Vandermar's that time. Well, here you see he's moving his feet. He blocks a shot. Now he doesn't give up, and he tries to hurdle over him. And again, look at the relentless pursuit. Does that tell you, Chris, that he's trying to let Reveno know, you got my attention by not starting me in this game? Another three, left, left short, A.J. John the rebound, Davis, shot clock is off, and so now Pepperdine, if it wants to, can settle for the final shot of this first half, under 10. Davis passes up the three, instead drives, runner with the right hand, no good, into the arms of Wintering, under five, Wintering the floater with the right hand, and it skims off the rim, no good. And what can know how much that is to do with their defensive pressure, but I want to see more active hands, and they've got to be able to defend inside out. Jet Reigns comes back out. He sat most of that first half with two personal fouls for the junior, and a big part of this Pepperdine offense, and he was a non-factor. He's been a big part of their team for the last couple. Immediately, they get into Davis. Big hop step inside. He got tied up, and that might be a jump ball, and it is. And so some active hands by the Pilots. Tying up Davis, putting the ball back the other way. Well, in that defensive possession, I like Presley. He was big. He had active hands up top. Here, Stacy goes on the bounce. They look to double, pause the jump ball. And who did it? The freshman, Dave Taylor. Really has been active, not playing like a freshman right now. Very poised and showing composure on both sides. Gayroon, the lob, the catch, the kick. Another shot, baseline on the way, not that time by the freshman. And the rebound is tracked down by Jeremy Major. That was a good look by the Pilots. I think it's really imperative that they get Jet Reigns going inside and try and get him started, command doubles, and then work it inside out to the perimeter. Davis from three. And that's going to bounce over the top of the backboard and out of bounds. Boy, Jet Reigns, who's been playing so good over the last couple of games and just hasn't been able to get too involved. Well, I'll tell you, a lot of it has to be with the interior defense of Portland, and that's what they went through in their 
walkthrough, trying to be disruptive inside and taking away the inside scoring of the Waves Bigs. Winner, a drive, kick, and Todd is going to knock it down from three. Jason Todd, who's over 50% on the season from downtown, extends the lead. Where it's hard to look out there and see that number 10 in purple is a freshman. He's big, he's strong, and he's got great confidence in him. Pepperdine able to knock down some shots. Davis kick it out to Olden. Olden a big part of life. Pepperdine was in in the first half. Here is Major in his 10 points. Shot clock under 10. Inside to Davis. A couple of pump fakes and a nice move by Stacy Davis, who's now got six. That's what I want to see more of. When I look at him out there, he reminds me of a poor man's Larry Johnson. Grandmama, if you will. If the perimeter game is not working, get inside and give me some bully ball. It's a great comparison. Larry Johnson could play inside, outside. There's a drive and getting blocked near the rim. Not that time by Taylor. Everdine down by a deuce. There's a long pass, and there is Reigns who catches the alley-oop and lays it up and in to tie it at 35. Well, that's the way to make it rain. you got a point guard that pushes it. You run the floor. You will be rewarded in this Pepperdine system. Wintering. 50 move to get inside, but he got rejected by Davis, who then picks up the loose ball and proceeds to turn it over as Todd the scoop layup, capitalizing on the turnover sort of takes the wind out of your sails. You make a great play, and then you toss it up. They get the score. Boy, Davis did everything right there, except the Cardinal sin of saving the ball out of bounds. And he comes back the other way and gets fouled. Right here, as you see, Jeremy Major, eyes up, on time, on target. Reigns with the two-hand catch, he lays it in. Now on the other side, you've got Stacy Davis. Maybe this defense can get him going. He's got to be their pit bull in the paint. Great hustle play, sees the double, then he coughs it up like you said, Chris. Davis at the free throw line, very good on the season at 82%, one of the best in the conference, but not that time. His 16 points per game, sixth in the WCC. But I tell you, he does it from inside out. He usually gets his numbers. Today, he's pressing just a little bit like I had seen earlier in the season. But again, trust your offense. Move the ball from the strong side to the weak side. The ball will always find good shots. Kevin Bailey, who led the way for the Pilots in the first half, he's off the bench. And there's Vandermars with the basketball back to the basket. And a battle with Davis. Sends it up to Gay Roon, who had it knocked away. Steps in. Oh, a wild shot contested. And boy, those big men underneath for Portland were determined to get that shot off, and it just wasn't a very good one. No surprise. I mean, Rebido wants to get them going, but I like that Pepperdine staying in that single man to man coverage down there because they haven't gotten off. There is Lamont Murray Jr. with his first bucket of the game. Well, when you talk about comparisons, I see him as a poor man's Adrian Dantley. Able to score, he comes in, he can defend, he can get you a jumper. I love the way he reads screens and curls. He's got a bright future. As you see here with Lamont Murray, puts it on the deck, finds an open spot, crafty enough to get it up over the big. I, I like his composure. A year ago, he's charging. This year, he's letting the game slow down. That's important for second-year players. Southern California... Southern California product with the Bishop Montgomery High School. Played for a great high school coach, Doug Mitchell. Very fundamentally sound. Bailey now trying to go inside. Went up with the right hand over Lamont Murray Jr. and finishes. So Bailey now with 17. We went back and forth to Ferris. Portland is up by a point. To me, what's interesting, what team is going to be able to make consecutive stops as opposed to trading baskets? The team that can do that should come out on the W side tonight in the next 15 minutes and 46 seconds. Major no good on the right elbow jumper, and we get a loose ball foul. Well, this one is lining up to be a good one, and it's been a tightly contested WCC season so far. These two teams came in four and five in the standings, and. It's been tight here all game. What well, is WCC wins are so hard to come on the road, and you know you've got to hold serve at home. These two teams have really gone at it. What concerns me is that Portland's shooting 48% from the field. That is very unwave like and I'm sure Marty Wilson discussed that in the last time out. This defense has to tighten up, and when the defense tightens up, they can get some easy offense. Bailey trying to do a little too much there as he 
Dribbles it out of bounds, but it was last touched by Pepperdine. He's been a focal point of the offense so far, and rightfully so. He's got 17 points. Well, I like the way when he put it on the floor, you saw white jerseys converge. You've got to build that wall, make him score over you, not by you. With the freshman, I need more active hands right here on the perimeter. There you go. A.J. John picks it up. That pass doesn't go through if you're tracing the ball. And we get a travel. And Kevin Bailey. Kevin Bailey looking for an explanation on his way back down the floor. <laughs> I've never seen a, a, a player at any level that says, you're right, I traveled. Boy, good or I fouled. Yeah, good call. Good call. Give the official little pat on the back on his way back down the floor. Here's Olden. Can he get involved in the second half? He knocked down some big shots, a couple of threes. And here Jeremy Major has the basketball. Right here now on the catch. I want to see him go inside to Jet Reigns. He should use his lower body as leg whip in front of the freshman. Try and get the basketball inside, go one-on-one. -on -one. If the double comes, kick it back out to, to Olden. Maybe he's got the jumper, Chris. Sean Olden will go to the free throw line where, despite his good shooting from the outside in this game, he's struggled a little bit. One out of four from the beard journey stripe. For this freshman. You know, and it surprises me that he doesn't shoot a better percentage because as you look at his technique, you see his shooting hand and his guide hand. There's very little wasted motion, and I like it that he does a good job. You shoot the basketball with your legs. Your hand is just like a golf tee that the ball sets up, not touching the palm. I think it'll get better as he continues to work on it in his skill development before and after practices. Well, he's been one of the better freshmen in the entire WCC, second best at about 10 points per game. This young man's got a bright future here. Knocks them both down, and Pepperdine back on top. I wonder if Wintering is going to get involved offensively, as Vandermars is going to get fouled on his way to the cup. Two big players on offense for Portland that really haven't been involved in the scoring department, Wintering. And now Vandermars is going to go to the free throw line. I just haven't seen him getting that deep post-up position that Eric Reveno always talks about. And being a former Stanford standout, I mean, he made a living at Stanford in the paint. These bigs usually on direct post-ups are there. But more importantly, I haven't seen that backside ducking. And that's what Portland has been very efficient and effective at. How about Eric Reveno going the great Popovich look tonight, going no tie? Well, I'll tell you, the no tie looks good. Plus, he's lost so much weight. I mean, he's in to working out. We had a big discussion about swimming. I swim a lot. He swims a lot. He looks really good for, for a guy that's 60, 75 years old. Don't tell him I said that. <laughs> I'm sure he'll go back and watch the tape. He will. <laughs> of course, was a longtime assistant for Mike Montgomery at Stanford and then for Trent Johnson for a couple of years before getting the head coaching job here in Portland. Now in his ninth season. You know, I love the way he brings his physical mentality to the game, but more to his X's and O's. There's a method to his madness. High IQ. He's able to make game adjustments. I like the chess match again. Both teams changing defense. These are two really good coaches that can X and O with the best of them in the country. Yeah, it, it almost seems like every time down the floor there's there's something new, whether it be a trap, whether it be a, some kind of zone, whether it be man-to-man. -man. These two teams are really playing a good game. It's a one-point game. Davis passes up the three. Another step back jumper, and that's just a tough shot. He hasn't knocked him down tonight. They ruled him with a rebound. Again, if I'm coaching Stacy, I'm telling him, make your dribble take you somewhere. I don't like the wasted dribble and then the step back pull up. Make your dribble take you somewhere or pass him. Oh, Presley aggressively off of the screen, and he missed the runner in the lane, but we're going to get a loose ball foul on Garoon, who came streaking in trying to grab the rebound. That'll be a foul on Portland, the third of this second half. You know, right here, you see Presley. He turns the corner. And now, I like the relentlessness of Boldy to go in, but sometimes you just got to concede it if you're on the back of the opposing player. Boldy gave root out of Ukraine. And that ball gets knocked out of bounds. As Vandermars is going to check back in. What we haven't seen in this game is his ability to stretch the floor. You know, he's inside, but being an overseas player, he's really good. I think great range in 17, but he will step out and shoot a three at times. As most of those overseas players can. Their fundamentals are good. They've all got good strokes. I see it all the time with Nikola Yovanovic at USC. As Davis almost had it knocked away and ultimately turned over, but they keep possession with five on the shot clock. Major a three. That's going to rim out. No good. There's Vandermars with the rebound amongst the traffic. 
Judas Reda is back in there as the point guard. Tanner Mars to Presley. Look at Sean Olden down there fronting Vandermars. I, I don't know if I would have called that a foul. I mean, I just like the way you've got a little on a big. He's front of him. He's competing. Also, Jefferson in here is adding a little bit of physicality in the lane. You've got to give the little guy the benefit of the doubt there. And he's staying low, trying not to give up too much positioning. And Portland had a little bit of a mismatch there, but I, I kind of agree with you. At halftime when we were in line to get a Coke, I saw people positioning a lot tougher than that, and there was no foul called. <laughs> Throwing bodies around the lob. Vandermar's oh. defense came and he got blocked. Heads up play by Jefferson. Yendolo is in. And that pass got kicked out of bounds by Suba Serretta. Island still with a one point lead. Right here on the replay, you see the over the top. And again, Jesperson stays with it. We'll get another look at it. I like the way that they move as the ball move. Key to help side defense. Jesperson in, and he played in that first half with Reigns on the bench, and Reigns still very quiet in the game with just four points. And we're going to get a foul away from the basketball. On Portland. 14 foul committed by the Pilots with 12.34 remaining. Marty Wilson did a great job. I don't know if the ref was going to call that foul, but Marty was right there in his ear and said, if you're going to call it on the other end, call it on this end. Yendolo and Superseta going at it. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of bumping now. If you're going to call it that way, then be consistent and don't call the sticky tax. Lamont Murray Jr. He rises up for that shot and misfires. And it's Serretta with the rebound. Pepperdine has missed four consecutive. Inside is Bailey, and he got rejected. As the ball is loose on the floor, and it'll stay on this end. Well, and all of a sudden, Pepperdine with... The aggressive blocks inside. Where's this interior defense yeah. coming from? Even though he didn't make the move, I love the way that Vandermeer, Vandermars was able to block out Murray hard on the play. Taylor is out as Garoon comes back in for the Pilots. 27 on the shot clock. Still Alec Wintering, who's going to inbound the basketball to Vandermars, who catches high and we get a foul. That's another... Foul that maybe you could have let go, but... Well, I think they, there with the principle of verticality, I thought you almost had to call it. But again, I'm like you. I like physical play inside. If you're going to let them play on both ends, they, they don't make the call. The key to defending this is with the bigs, you always have to stay attached. And if you're screened, you've got to get over that screen. You can't switch. Fresh shot clock for the Pilots. Bailey wants to drive, pulls up for the shot on the way, and he knocks it down. Well, that was good defense by Murray, better offense by Bailey. Tough shot, Chris. Well, Kevin Bailey was the leading scorer last season. Now we're going to get a foul on Pepperdine. An offensive foul on Marley Biendolo. Come easy, and I've been impressed tonight with both teams on the defensive end. Well, these, these are two teams that are coming down. They're changing offenses, uh, defenses, excuse me. They're giving different looks. But again, to me, the key is going to be who can get consecutive stops. The team that gets three consecutive stops may be able to create the separation and finish this thing out in the next 11 minutes. Pepperdine nice, needs to find an answer for Bailey, but that is Wintering who's no good on a three. And a loose ball, and it looked like the waves were going to get it, but they deflected out of bounds as Alec Winterling continues to struggle from the outside. Amazingly, Wintering just one point. Yeah, 0 for 5 from the field, but what I like, they have 11 assists as a team. He's got 7, so while he's not impacting the game scoring, he's impacting the game as a facilitator. Leading the team at 5.5 assists a game and getting kicked ball. When he's not scoring... He could certainly dish it out. He had 13 assists against USF, which was one shy of a school record. So he's been facilitating things offensively, guarded by Major. But Lamont Murray Jr. did a great job of taking away that slice cut. Now they've got to take it to the other side. Good defense right here. Active hands. Don't foul. 
you've got to gap him and stay there, take away his vision and his airspace. Silly foul when you're playing good, aggressive defense. That negates the hustle and the aggressiveness. Well, this is big now because that is the seventh team foul on Pepperdine, and we got an eternity to go in this game, 11-13. Not even midway through this second half. 17 foul, and that's going to put Portland at the free throw line for at least the one and one the rest of the way. No doubt about it. I mean, Marty Wilson has one of the best teams in all of college basketball, and the key is to defend without fouling. You've got to remain aggressive, but you can't put teams on the free throw line, and especially those silly fouls when he's not putting it on the floor to get to the hole. You had him squared off. Just maintain that normal gap. Don't reach. Play defense with your feet. Front end of the one and one is good. Second one also good by Bailey. His numbers continue to soar here. He's got 20 in the game. He's the leading scorer. As now Portland is out to a five-point lead after a 6-0 run. Keith Russell back in for the Waves. He's been quiet here tonight. Davis back to the basket. He's triple team. Olden, why not? Three, not that time. Vandermars with the rebound. Wintering's pass in transition got deflected out of bounds. Well, here is Jed Reigns. And the big question will be whether or not the Waves can get him involved offensively. Well, he, he's really struggled today, and I'm not quite sure. The times I've seen him in, he's almost winded, but he just hasn't been aggressive getting a piece of the paint offensively. Let's see if he can get it going defensively. That time the pass, ninth inside, got deflected and picked off. Major the other end, the reverse layup right off the glass, and he spun it in. And that's what got Pepperdine back in it in the first half was the defense creating the offense. Active hands, deflections, deflections create steals, steals create easy, offensive, efficient shots. Andrew Mars in the post. Pump fake got Davis in the air, nice move. And a crafty move, and so he'll go to the free throw line. This Pepperdine team defensively has active hands. Once Major gets it down the middle, he's able to find that seam. He finishes, and I love the way he shields and uses his body. But I also like the way Reigns ran the floor, assuming that every shot is a miss. That's the hustle you want out of your bigs. Vandermars at the free throw line, no good. 62%. For the preseason, all WCC selection. And a starter every year up in Portland. Knocks down the second, hook to part the game. And the freshman, Gabe Taylor, who started the game, comes back in. Is it safe to say that Reveno has gotten Bailey's attention? <laughs> or or uh, Vandermark. <laughs> well, yeah, he, that needs to have more attention. But, but I like the way Bailey has come out, focused, uh, he got the message of not starting. Okay, Rune came down with a rebound and went tumbling to the floor and it gets called for the travel and the drive from Olden. Well, here I, I like the dribble drive. Right there again, you've got to have common sense. Don't hustle and then negate it with the foul. Davis triggers it into the backcourt to Sean Olden. Portland now back to that zone. This really caused some problems for Pepperdine in that first half. See, I, I want to get somebody right there in the gut in the middle of the zone. I don't really like taking that ball to the corner as we saw in the first half. Stacy Davis continuing to get trapped. Get the basketball to the middle. Stretch the defense like a rubber band. Well, T. Russell didn't have any problem getting to the basket there. No, sir. Taylor left open, no good. And ball is loose. We're going to get a foul on Portland here. Latif Russell taking matters into his own hands. Right here, you've got him on the dribble drive. What he does extremely well, uses his body as a... Got 21 points. Well, he's really picked up the slack tonight. Again, not hunting shots, reading the defense, getting to the elbows, taking good shots, getting in side not settling I like the way he's let the game come to him again so talented when you have patience and being a floor game tonight Chris so Bailey coming off of the bench 21 point season high 23 Bryce Presley another one of those players who missed a little bit of time due to a concussion he is back in action well, I think he's one of their most versatile players well major got blocked inside but Pepper not able to retain possession
Now you've got Portland back to man again, a chess match. Eric Revino doing a great job of disrupting the ebb and flow of the Waves offense. Look how far they are starting their offense. I mean, that is a good point of pickup, disruptive pressure. Tough to get it inside the line is, so oh, it's going to be a turnover. The shot clock was winding down, and Sean Olden tried to make a move inside and popped it up off of his foot for the turnover. And turnover's not a real big part of this game for either team, both in single digits. But empty possessions will kill a coach. I mean, when you're down two points and you come down there and you don't even get a shot, that's what makes you sometimes lose your hair. Little full court pressure now from the Waves. Now they back off as Presley will bring it across the timeline. There were times in the first half when the defense really stepped it up. These two teams went quiet from the floor. We've seen that here the last couple of minutes. It has not been a big scoring second half. Now Bailey, another runner, this time with the right hand, and he's got the shooter's touch as it bounces in. Well, he's a tough shot maker, extremely talented, getting really aggressive off the dribble drive. Surprises me that guys aren't coming over to help and then recover back to their own man. Major got caught underneath, and we're going to get a blocking foul on the pilots. Boy, Kevin Bailey, now with a season-high 23. Great move offensively, but as you see, there's white jerseys that are just standing there. Help side defense has to be proactive. You have to move as the ball moves, and that puts you in a position to shrink the floor and ultimately be there to take the charge or make him stop and kick it back out, reset your defense. Bobby Sharp has checked into the game for the first time for the Pilots. Senior player from Northern California. Junior college transfer, really good shooter, can heat up in bunches. Led to Craig McMillan. Sunday Rosen Junior College. He knows something about making big shots. He does. Rayers on a wildcat. 48 to 44. Davis, who's been triple teamed all night every time he's tried to get it in the post. Again, the shot clock winding down. Davis will step back three. So again, how about a Russell ripping down the rebound? Goes right to the rim, no good. And good defense there by Gabe Taylor. Wintering pushing back the other way, and he'll bring it back out. Presley passes up the three. Goes baseline. There is Sharp. And not that time. Vandermars with the offensive rebound on the weak side. Like the baseline drive, the baseline flare. Great offensive rebound by Vandermars. Now they get a reset. Wintering drives, falls, lost the handle. Russell, here come the waves. Three on one. It's Reigns who's going to lay it up and in. And it's a two-point game. Boy, guards love big step run. You get there, you get to the middle of the lane, somebody's filling that lane. That's fun basketball. Jed Reigns with six. Wintery passes up the three. A lot to Vandermars. Hook shot good. He missed those in the first half. But not that time. I tell you, I watch a lot of college basketball. That's one of the best jump hooks in all of college basketball. And credit him for putting in the time, but just as importantly, the coaches. This is a staff that is big on player development, and we've just seen him progress each and every year, adding something to his offensive arsenal. Pepperdine with the defense. On this team. Now, it's a good thing he doesn't have a full head of hair because he would lose it. But back to Marty. He's recruited what he calls OKGs, our kind of guys. And these are guys that are going to develop. Most goals in college basketball are 10 foot high. Marty Wilson's goals are much higher than 10 feet. It's about what? developing the total person. Hey, if you're good enough to be a pro, so be it. But he wants men that are going to go into the world and make a difference in life after basketball. And want guys that want to be a part of the Pepperdine Wave program. And he sells them on the history that this school has in trying to get back to that point. They were regularly in the NCAA tournament. They put some players in the NBA over the years. And then you talk about the great coaches, Gary Colson, Jim Herrick, Tom Asbury, Paul Westfall, all guys that nationally are known. There's a turnover. Olden back the other way, counted in the foul. This is where you get out and you deny the wing. The freshman puts it on the floor, keeps his chin on the rim, plays through the contact, has a chance for an old-fashioned three-point play for Pepperdine to take the lead, Chris. 
And so Olden with the last four, he knocked down the two free throws in the one and one. And now Pepperdine with an opportunity to take the lead. And really what hasn't been the case the majority of this second half, it's been mostly Portland on top. But he misses the free throws, Vandermars with the rebound as the 12 lead changes, most of those came in the first half. And we are tied at 50 with 6.20 to go. Outside, Presley goes to the baseline, passes out to Wintering. There's an open Bailey three, right side, not that time. Vandermars sells the foul underneath, and we're getting a loose ball foul that'll put Thomas Vandermars, the 6'11 senior, at the free throw line. I'm seeing and I'm feeling a little extra step in the defense, right, with Pepperdine. It tied up at 50-50. Again, I'm going to keep beating this drum. It's going to come down to consecutive stops. Who can dig down deep and be able to get stops and, again, defend without fouling? Well, Vandermars no good on the free throw. Gaylord's trying to keep it alive. Bailey rips it away. Gaylord, as he's diving to the floor, trying to get it out to Presley. And it goes out of bounds. Last touch by the Waves. Great hustle play by the freshman, Olden, to dive, trying to get that loose ball. So after missing the front end of the one and one, Portland with 30 seconds on the shot clock. Question is, where does the scoring come for the Pilots outside of Kevin Bailey? It really hasn't been there tonight. Well, that's been the big question. I mean, again, I'm not seeing the bigs get that piece of a paint. I always teach. Knife into the paint, get two feet in there, spread out, demand the ball vocally and with your target hands. There's Presley left open three, a little too strong, no good. And the long rebound out to Major as he has to save it out of bounds. Great job by the point guard to rebound down. Tied at 50, so Pepperdine now with a chance to take the lead. Here is Olden. He has been Spark tonight, Davis wants to drive right side, floor to right hand, no good. Ball tipped out long to Bailey. See what he decides to do. He got stripped on his way up, and they're going to call a foul. To me, it looked like all ball, but again, different angle. We'll see right here. I, I didn't hear any skin. I, I saw a lot of leather. Let's see right here. That was clean. That was extremely clean. And even if he got from the wrist to your fingers, that's part of the ball. Tough call that puts Bailey at the free throw line. And he now has a season high 24. And Pepperdine. Home, you get zero. If you win on the road, you get a one. If you lose at home, you get a minus one. That'll give you the true standings of where you're at as this conference race heats up. Shaping up. A lot of good teams, a lot of quality. This Pepperdine team went down to the wire with Gonzaga the other night. It was a two-point game. Pepperdine had an opportunity on a number of different occasions to take the lead and just couldn't quite capitalize. And it was a raucous Firestone Fieldhouse as Bailey able to knock them both down at the other end. So he's got 25. And the Pilots still maintaining a lead now, 52 to 50, with just over five minutes to go. Portland out there in a man-to-man -man single coverage with Stacey Davis. The double comes. Bounce pass to Olden, spins, pump fake, got his man in the air, the left hand shot no good, and Vandermars there to corral the rebound. Pepperdine matching up out of this 2-3, there's the over the top. Oh, the help defense from Russell came to block the shot on Vandermars. Great heads up play. Russell moving on the flight of the pass. That's the second time that I did try to lob it. And there's a lob from Major on the backdoor alley oop, and Jet Reigns flushes it home. Again, love a long athletic big that moves with a the purpose. There was no casual cut there. Boy, Reigns has been quiet, but he's had some big plays. That's his second alley oop of the night. Wintering has to take many shots, misses that one. Ball tipped out to Olden. Olden blocked by Bailey. Picked up by a major. And 
Pepperdine will set it up offensively. Yeah, get Major out here, have some composure. This is where I'd like to go to a get play. You want a basket, go to a get play that you run every day in practice. Russell catches, kicks it out, range the three, got it! 53% of the season in range. Gives the Waves the three-point lead. Marty Wilson very confident on Jet Reigns being able to pop out there and knock down the long ball. Bailey trying to answer no good. Loose ball, and it's saved by Todd. Over to Bailey, Bailey driving, and we get a foul or we get a travel. I think one in their carry-on. Well. Oftentimes, the best players have a knack for showing up when it matters most. Jet Reigns is totally quiet in the first 20, but here over the last couple, he has made his mark with a couple of big plays, a couple of alley-oops to help lift Pepperdine to a three-point lead as Kevin Bailey is at the free throw line for two. Well, this is where you count on your seniors to be able to get to that free throw line and with a three-point game. These, we always say free throws win games. These are the easy points that the other team can't guard. You've got to nail them. Bailey knocks down the second. Make it a two-point game. He has been all the offense tonight for the Pilots. we now employ a little pressure in the backcourt. All people, it's Stacey Davis going to bring it across the timeline. Well, this is where I think they have an advantage because Stacey Davis is an undersized four that's got handled. I don't know if you might clear out and let him try and go one-on-one -on -one right here. Looks like they've got a wing iso. He doesn't force it. I like that. Gets the ball in the point guard's hand to Jeremy Major. Davis, little pump fake back outside to Major. Boy, he had a notion to take a three. Shot clock winding down. Here's Olden. Crosses up. The three. No, not that time. And Vandermars with the rebound. We're going to get a foul on Portland. On the clear out of the box. Very lucky for the Pepperdine Waves. Did not like that shot. When the shot clock is getting down, that's what I want to see. You put the basketball on the floor. And if you can't get to the rim, use your mid-range game. Get a little stop and pop. One -on -one. One -on -one. Those are the tough fouls. Now Jet Reigns will be at the free throw line. Somehow he's got 11 points in the game. They get 12. Front end of the one-on-one -on -one is good. If my memory's right, this is his first two trips to the free throw line. So these are big for him going there to be able to hit a lot of pressure with a three-point game. 73% of the season, knocks down the second, and Pepperdine is going to call a timeout. To go high-low, that was one of our keys in the pregame show, was to limit that. They've taken that away. Now, again, you can't let up on Bailey, but you can't let anybody else get off. You've got to tighten up the defense right here. Looks like they're, they're still in their matchup. So Portland one out of its last seven from the floor, including five consecutive misses. And that'll be a turnover on a careless pass. Entered into the wing, and it just got deflected. The big difference there defensively, five guys in a stance, and they were in a pistol stance. Pointing man, pointing ball, and talking on the other end. Much time as we'll get a foul on a drive from Jeremy Major, the 5'10 sophomore. Showing it some composure there. That's what he's really good at. When he finds a seam, using his body, lowered his shoulder, not drawing an offensive foul, but being able to draw that foul. You know, this is a team that overall, they're 11th in the NCAA shooting free throws at 75.6%. That's what's going to win you games when it's close. I was just going to say, what, what do free throws do for you? They close out games. Absolutely. But Major... At under 70% is one out of two. And the lead is five for Pepperdine, which is, I believe, the biggest of the game. I see Pep in their step, Chris, but I also see their mouths moving. They're talking, they're pointing, they're passing players off. They've got active hands, which are creating deflections. There's a deflection, and out of bounds, last touch by the Pilots. And all of a sudden, Portland has turned the ball over two consecutive times. Not even getting a shot off. And that's what you can't do with the game on the line. One or two minutes to go, down by five. 
Holden has a pass deflected. Wintering. Reverse layup, and he got it off the glass. Cardinal mistake by the freshman. you got to catch, turn, and look. You can't predetermine nor jump to pass when you're being pressed. And right there, I like Major giving him a little console, letting him know. So here you see he catches it. You've got to turn and look. You can't put it on the floor going to the baseline side because the only uh, sideline, excuse me, the only place to go is to dribble out of bounds. And don't leave your feet. Never leave your feet. We always teach when you leave your feet, it's to shoot, not to pass. Portland with a foul before the ball was inbounded. And so Stacey Davis will go to the free throw line and the first one rattles in. What'd you tell me about free throws a minute ago, Chris? Close out games. They can be your they can be your best friend or your or your worst enemy. Yeah, and that's why coaches at the end of a practice always say, finish on a make. Davis with eight in the game. Making nine. Knocks two big free throws down to push the lead back up to five. Now this bodes well for Pepperdine if in fact when Portland wants to go to a three, and not that they should now. This is a team that defends a three better than anybody in the nation. Boy, Eric Revino calling a timeout when it looked like Wintering had broken down. Play hard. They compete almost every possession. They don't take possessions off. And again, it's the home court that you have to protect. But it's going out on the road if you want to finish in that top three. You've got to steal a road win here or there. Coming out of the timeout, see if the Pilots can draw something up. Bailey's been the answer. Knight being down the paint, pulls up, left the shot short. And coming in for the rebound on the wing is Atif Russell. We get a jump ball, and the arrow says Pepperdine basketball. I like that action. I thought initially they looked to go inside and not barely found a seam. Right there, Vandemars with the inside position wasn't able to get it. There you see the tie-up. So down by five with a minute and 14. You almost have to start fouling immediately here. You want to extend the game. You want to come down. You're not hunting for threes. You'll take one, but you want to score foul. Reigns to engage it in. It's it off to Major, and we're going to get a blocking foul on Wintering. That'll put Major now at the free throw line. A minute 13. The other thing of the utmost importance, as, as Portland comes up to press, you've got to have guys move to the middle. There's got to be a pressure release. Very similar to that in the half court against the zone. You can't stand and watch. You've got to move to an area. And if your man goes to trap, you're the person that's open. You've got to make yourself visible to the dribbler. Major's had himself a game. 14 points. For Jeremy Major, a sophomore who has started every game of his career, so this is nothing new to him, but he missed the second. And it's a six-point game. Portland's got pulled on offense. Wintering a like drive that. to the bucket. We're going to get a jump ball as Davis was right there to tie him up. And the arrow will keep it on this end. Defend without fouling as the by six. In a game that was really controlled for the majority by Portland in getting buckets from Kevin Bailey and some of the freshmen early on in the game. Pilots in desperate need of some scoring to stay in it as Wintering gets blocked from behind by Major. Great one-on-one -on -one defense, stay between his man and the ball. One-on-one -on -one with Davis and the baby hook with the right hand is good to cut the lead of the Waves to four and we get another timeout. The NCAA tournament and they'll be rewarded for calling a good game. So 57 seconds. Portland right now down by four. Needs all the time it can to try to get back in it. It'll be Vandermars, the pressure of the basketball and Jed Reigns. For, Pepper, for Pepperdine, you want to fake a pass to make a pass. For Portland, you don't want to get beat long. Keep everything in front of you. They get it inside to the freshman. Back to Reigns. Reigns. Back over to Olin. Clearly, Portland is going for the steal as opposed to fouling and I believe we will get timeout now by Pepperdine so I, I like the tactic there from Eric Revino not going for so since the 10 second rule starts again as Reigns will inbound it you would expect Portland would want to foul right away here well they go for the steal as well and has to dive for it and did he touch the paint? He did, and so Portland gets the turnover. I thought he was either out of bounds, which I couldn't see, or because he slid, 
that it would be a travel. They got it right out of bounds. And so again, instead of not fouling right away, it works in the pilot's favor with 43 seconds and down by four. So that changes everything. Those turnovers are huge. See what Bailey does here offensively. Aggressively all the way to the rim. We're going to get an offensive foul as Reigns was there to draw the charge. This excites Marty Wilson, and you saw the Pepperdine bench go up again on the dribble drive, and there you have it. Reigns gets set. He's able to sell it, and he doesn't turn. He takes it straight on the chest. Great play by Jet Reigns. Boy, that could have been a game changer, and Reigns was waiting for the drive of Bailey. Great coaches. It's entertaining. This, this league shoots the ball extremely well, and they've got some good defensive clubs. I will say this. The WCC and a lot of mid-majors get a lot more credit in basketball than football. Davis thought about the home run. Instead, immediately gets it in to Atifa Russell, who will now go to the free throw line with 36 seconds to go in a four-point game. So it's not like football where a lot of those mid-majors, they're just not going to compete with the big conferences. But in basketball, there's a little more respect for some of the mid-majors, particularly teams like Pepperdine and BYU and St. Mary's in the WCC. Well, we've seen years back when a WCC team is good and gets in there, they can make a little bit of a run. And now you see with 30 seconds left, they've gone to the foul game. Expect them to extend this game and uh, score and foul, score and foul, putting the waves on the free throw line. Portland just has not been able to capitalize on opportunities offensively. Just got completely quiet from the floor. They got the turnover, weren't able to capitalize. Now Atif Russell misses the first free throw. He's got one more. And he got that one. 80% on the season. And it's back to a five-point game. Here's Bailey. And Pepperdine commits a foul. That's the one thing that you don't, don't want to do. do. You want to keep this clock moving. You want to slide your feet. And, and, and again, it's not about reaching. It's about moving your feet laterally, contesting shots. Portland has had a really balanced attack throughout the season with a variety of different players getting in the scoring department. But that has just not been the factor today. It's Bailey knocks down the first. He's got 27 points. There's not another Pilots player in double digits. Well, the key to me today has been him letting the game come to him. Not forcing things, not rushing things, not how many shots am I going to get. He's had a great rhythm and flow offensively and defensively. Second one is good, and it's a one-possession game. It's 62-59. to 59. Key here for Pepperdine. Meet your pass with the jump stop. Russell catches. Double team. Passes out, and we're going to get a foul. It'll be a foul, and Portland thought that he shuffled the feet. That is on Bailey, so he's out of the game. He's fouled out. Unfortunate for him who's had a good game. But here, here, Chris, if you're going to go to the foul game to extend it, I think the minute that Pepperdine catches the ball, you have to foul. Because right there, if in fact it comes down to a two-second game, you gave up three or four seconds. I'm not looking for the travel. Look for the steal, foul immediately, send him to the charity strike. All right, Coach, we were talking off the air about these being teaching moments. Every single stoppage these last two minutes. Can take about a half an hour. And as your coach, boy, you love it. Getting these tight games, you know it's going to pay off at some point. Well, in practice, you can stop it as many times as you want. These are great teaching moments because, again, you got the timeout. The game's on the line. The opponent doesn't know what you're going to do in practice. All 10 guys on the floor know what you're trying to execute because you've been practicing it. This right here is going to set up for both teams a win somewhere down the road in this conference or the NCAA tournament because of an experience they've had to either defend or execute offensively. Atif Russell, his second consecutive trip to the free throw line. He was just one out of two, and he misses the first, and it's still a one possession game. See, to me, it's all about focus and concentration. There's too much movement with Russell there on the free throw line. You shoot the ball with your legs, hold your follow through until it goes through the net. I like the second one. Got the second. Four point game. Wintering to the rim, and he lays it up and in. And it's 63 61 with 23.7. Again, they'll get it into Russell. And Taylor commits the personal foul. That'll put a T Russell back at the line. Free throws could be your best friend or your own worst enemy. Portland got what it needed there with a quick bucket from Wintering. Did it with the same time. So what you 
what you tell shooters is, if two can fit in together, one can. This is going to be key. Let's look at his approach and his lack of wasted motion. And the first one is good. Shot it with his legs, held his follow-through. That's the key. I always say your follow-through is a fishing pole when you're fly fishing. You're trying to put your hand in the rim, whether you're aiming over the front or the back. That's a personal preference. And two big ones for the junior at T. Russell. And it's back to a four-point lead. Solid D, no fouls. Sharp, no good on a three. Can't give up offensive rebounds. Todd from the right side, no. Long rebound out to Sharp, and he is... Oh, it's going to be a jump ball. Great It'll be Pepperdine play. ball. And that's a microcosm of the second half for Portland. Two good looks and not able to knock him down. Sharp from the top of the key. Todd from the right wing was wide open. And now Pepperdine can inbound this pass with 6.2. Right here, I'd like to see you're going to have someone go left, right. But somebody set a ball screen and then set, step back on the screen. Right there, Stacey Davis. Davis catches. He's tied up immediately. And we're going to get a foul on Portland. It could have been a tie-up, but it'll be a personal foul, 4.2. So Davis will head back to the free throw line. What I like right there is Jeremy Major getting his team together. That shows me his maturation as a leader. He's always had skills, but he got his team together and got them and let them know what we're going to do defensively after Stacy hits these free throws. So Pepperdine here at home. Able to overcome a second half deficit. Doing just enough. As Davis stood on the second. Well, they took on the personality of their coach, Marty Wilson. They never gave up. Their defense got better in the second half. They were able to score much more easier. It'll be time to enter it in. Presley catches. That'll count right before the gun. And that'll do it here.